The internet is an educational place. It is also a strange place. It all depends on what you click and when you click it. Some corners of the web might just cough up interesting and game-changing facts that shake up what you think you know about the nature of the universe. And other corners of the web will just show you videos of weird things like a cat sneezing or a man solving a Rubik's Cube with his feet. Well, guess what? We're going to show you some clips that are the best of both worlds. These are the strangest things you didn't know five minutes ago. Number 15. Largest Beaded Wedding Dress For most women, there's no more important day than their wedding day. A magical day in which a single dress can make or break the whole event. But if a typical wedding dress is too ordinary for you, well, maybe this kind of absolute madness is more your speed. Many people have no idea that there is such a thing as a fabric-free wedding dress, which is only going to make this entry all the more confusing. Over the course of three and a half years, 23 women worked to create this thing, the world's largest all-bead wedding dress. The dress features over 1 million beads and weighs over 400 pounds, making it not only impressive to look at, but also a fitness challenge for the women that have to somehow walk with it on their back and not develop severe scoliosis. Despite all the work that's gone into making the dress a reality, it seems to have slipped under the radar with many people unaware of its existence. Possibly because very few women are willing to walk down the aisle with a 400 pound dress on their back. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. We are willing to bet 100 bucks that you had no idea about this next crazy story five minutes ago. Mr. Gino Cavassi was taking an ordinary stroll along Pompano Beach in Florida when he spotted something curious wash up on the sand. It looked to be about the size of a softball, and he wanted to take a closer look. But once he did, he realized that what he was looking at was something that could look back at him. The object was no mere softball, but actually an incredibly large eye, totally separated from the body of whatever animal it had come from. And that's just the thing. A lot of scientists have gotten involved, trying to decipher exactly which animal this came from. And they can't seem to come to a concrete decision. The eye has been described as, and sorry for how gross this is, very, very fresh suggesting the poor beast had suffered a very recent demise. While scientists are confident it probably just belonged to a larger-than-average fish, that hasn't stopped the conspiracy theorists speculating it could belong to anything from the Loch Ness Monster to a Megalodon. But what do you think? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag JuicyTopic, and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now, to the next topic. Number 14. History's Shortest War The history books tend to focus on the big wars of our time, like World War II, the Seven Years' War, or Star Wars. But what about the wars that didn't get nine movies? Say, for example, the Anglo-Zanzibar War of 1896. Oh, you haven't heard of it? Probably because it was over before it started. And doesn't that sound familiar? The Anglo-Zanzibar War is widely thought to be the shortest war in history, lasting only 38 minutes. That's barely enough time to make it to the battlefield at all. The war erupted after pro-British Sultan Hamad bin Thuwaini died, and was replaced by Sultan Khalid bin Bargash, a sultan that was very much not going to bend things in favor of the British. Due to the ignoring of an obscure rule that required the British to sign off on any new sultan, the British demanded that the Sultan Khalid step down immediately. Instead, he holed himself up in his palace, just as we probably all would. By 9 a.m., the British arrived at the palace with an armada and declared war on the palace, with the war beginning at 9.02 and ending by 9.40. With their mission a success, the British replaced the new sultan with another pro-British choice. Apparently, a quick fight makes you more willing to rig the system. Number 13. Home of the Donuts 
When we think of Canada, we think of mountains, ice hockey, and Michael Bublé. Yet we don't really stop to think about donuts, because why would we? Well, it turns out that Canada is really the world capital of donuts, and none of us even knew it. Believe it or not, Canada has the world's highest number of donut shops per capita, around five times more than the United States. In the 1990s, as Starbucks kicked the coffee shop boom in the United States, and later the world, a new trend came with it fried rings of dough that turned out to be delicious, with that beautifully bitter taste of coffee. But while everyone else was focused on expanding the coffee business, Canada began to blossom with the delicious taste of sweet, fried donuts. While there's no practical way to know how many donut shops exist in Canada, we can say for certain that the largest brand, Tim Hortons, has 4,592 restaurants in Canada alone. A lot of fried dough. There were already a whole bunch of reasons to visit Canada, but I'd bet none of them will appeal to people quite as much as this one. Why go anywhere else when you can enjoy some delicious fried dough everywhere you go? Number 12. Largest Desert on Earth Ask yourself this question. What is the largest desert on our planet? We'll wait. If you said the Gobi, Thar, Nambi, Sahara, Sonoran, or pretty much any other major landmass involving sand, you were way off. The answer to this trick question is actually Antarctica. But don't worry, we've not lost our minds. Well, we have, but this entry is factually correct. Technically speaking, a desert doesn't have to involve sand or cacti of any kind. The definition of a desert is a region that is dry due to a lack of water. A desert must receive less than 250 milliliters of rain, snow mist, or fog. Temperature zero Celsius. Hence, we tend to think of deserts as being overwhelmingly hot and sandy, though the temperature has absolutely nothing to do with it. For this reason, Antarctica absolutely counts as a desert and actually makes up a good chunk of the desert on this planet. Antarctica measures 13.8 square kilometers and gets less than 51 millimeters of precipitation per year making this one of the largest and most intense deserts in the world, reaching temperatures of minus 90 degrees. At least your ice cream won't melt. Number 11, prison to plate dinner. For most of us, lobster is an expensive and very rare treat due to its overly expensive cost. In some restaurants, a simple lobster dinner can cost up to $50 or beyond, making it a costly meal out and definitely not something to enjoy regularly. But believe it or not, the lobster was once considered to be a lump of garbage meat. We have the body side, we have the tail, we have the legs. Centuries ago, when the first settlers reached America's shores, they discovered this new land was home to many, many lobsters. So many, in fact, that they could pile up these delicious crustaceans two feet high. But while modern chefs would see this as an opportunity for an all-you-can-eat seafood menu, the colonists kind of hated it. They found these animals to be so gross that they even called them cockroaches of the sea. The sheer amount of the lobsters made the meat incredibly cheap, which means that it was fed to prisoners and slaves. By the 1800s, canned lobster became an incredibly popular product on the market. And as train travel became more affordable, fresh lobster became more popular. By the end of the 1800s, restaurants began pricing it up. Ah, <sighs> how time flies. Number 10, War of the Bucket. In the days before Amazon and online shopping, people went to great lengths in order to gather their daily essentials. Whether that meant strolling up and down the aisles of whatever store that was nearby or hunting some kind of animal with a stick, people had to get their stuff in any means possible, even if that meant a war for a bucket. In 1309, following two centuries of fighting amongst various religious factions, Ronaldo Passarino Bonacolsi became ruler of Mantua, Modena, Parma, and Reggio. After launching a series of hostile attacks on the Bolognese territories, Bonacolsi was named by the Pope as an enemy of the church. From there, the battles grew stronger and stronger. In 1325, the chaos was so widespread that some of Bonacolsi's soldiers were able to sneak into Bologna and steal a bucket filled with Modenese loot. Bologna demanded the bucket back. The Modenese soldiers refused, and it took no time at all until Bologna declared war because of a wooden bucket. 
The war went on for some time, and even the Pope himself led an army of 32,000 into battle. Around 2,000 men were killed on both sides, and a treaty was eventually made, though it didn't work. War continued on for many years. Today, the bucket is on display at the Palazzo Communale. Do not steal it, even for a joke. Number 9. The Origin of Tea Bags Accidents happen. Maybe you fall on a wet floor, or use the wrong seasonings, or go on a vacation with a woman that claims to be your mother, but who is actually just a very maternal janitor. We all make mistakes, but few of our mistakes changed the world quite like Thomas Sullivan's did. In the 17th century, tea was not at all like it is today. Unlike modern convenience, the ancient art of brewing tea required tea leaves and a filter of some kind, which turned the whole thing into an elaborate science lesson. Enter Thomas Sullivan, the master tea bagger. In the 1900s, Thomas Sullivan was but a lowly tea merchant, selling his wares in a booming industry. But there was a problem. Tea is such a messy business that it was impossible to send samples to potential customers. After some experimentation, Sullivan developed the tea bag, a silk package of tea leaves designed to be dipped into hot water. Customers loved it, but the silk material didn't quite work. Sullivan came back with a creative alternative. Gauze or paper would be used to contain the leaves, and wrapped up with a string and decorative tag that allowed the bag to be removed. With just one misunderstanding, Sullivan improved on his own product and changed tea forever. Number 8. Bed Bugs We've long been aware that we're surrounded by the descendants of dinosaurs. But it turns out that they may be a little closer than previously thought. As much as we don't like to think about them, bed bugs have been around longer than any of us. A lot longer. An international study revealed that bed bugs evolved around 100 million years ago, a period in which dinosaurs were still happily roaming the Earth. While scientists have long suspected that bed bugs were the byproduct of bats, the new study confirms that they're actually close relatives to the prehistoric giants. They're Therefore, anybody that has experienced a bed bug bite can happily say that they've been bitten by a dinosaur. Okay, maybe not dinosaur, but a prehistoric creature that knew the dinosaurs. That's close enough in my book. Much like a T Rex bite, nobody really wants to experience an encounter with bed bugs. And this little tidbit might make you doubtably repelled by these things. However, it does give us some hope that we can just freeze our beds and give these little guys another ice age to die out. Number 7. Knocker Uppers don't get too excited, it's absolutely not what you think. While most men would proudly boast that they consider themselves to be knocker-uppers, that's a whole other thing. Also, those men should probably get themselves checked out at a clinic of some kind. We're talking about a whole other kind of knocker-upper here. In the early 20th century, the knocker upper was the human equivalent of a wake-up call or an alarm clock. Customers would leave a note on their door or window specifying when they wanted to be woken up, and it would be up to the knocker upper to make it happen. But remember, this was a simpler time. Rather than making some obnoxious noise or just knocking the door, the knocker upper would use sticks, clubs, or pebbles to knock on their customers' windows. Really makes you wonder how many people woke up with a brick through their window, doesn't it? At the time, the knocker upper was a popular service with factory owners who would solicit their services to wake their laborers and employees. It's just a shame that the knocker upper went out of business with the advent of the alarm clock. Maybe Apple should release the eye knocker upper. Number 6. World's Tallest Tropical Tree It seems there's a world record for just about everything nowadays. From the world's longest jump by a cat, to the heaviest weight lifted by a human beard. But even nature can be record-breaking, as these Malaysian trees have demonstrated. In 2016, a grove of yellow maranti trees was discovered in Borneo, measuring an incredible 308 feet a full 30 feet higher than the previous record. But Mother Nature is one to constantly outdo herself, and boy did she pull a doozy. In 2019, a team of researchers from the universities of Nottingham and Oxford journeyed to the forest of Borneo, only to break the record pretty spectacularly. 
After spotting a particularly large tree, the researchers made the risky decision to climb the tree with a tape measure in hand, confirming that this tree was 330.7 feet tall, the first of its size to be recorded anywhere on the planet. As if it's not enough to be stupidly tall, this incredibly humongous tree is estimated to weigh around 81,500 kilograms, almost the weight of a full-sized blue whale, the largest mammal on the planet. Well, how about that? Number 5. Flamingos Real or fake? Yes, flamingos are technically real, but how many of them have you actually seen in person? Probably none. But how many fake flamingos have you seen? There's probably no limit to that, right? Well, there may be a reason for that. In 1957, designer Don Featherstone concocted a genius design for his employers at Union Products. Taking inspiration from flamingos he saw in National Geographic, he began sculpting them from clay, with plans to transform it into something sellable. Soon after, the pink flamingo became a staple of Florida culture, with many 1960s homes featuring one of these iconic plastic birds. But, as with most 1960s staples, the bird became kitschy, and the pink flamingo is now widely considered a piece of trash culture iconography. However, that doesn't mean they're not popular. There are more fake plastic flamingos in the United States than their real-life counterparts. Not sure what that says about America. The plastic flamingos briefly faced extinction when Union Products shut down in 2006. But thankfully, another company stepped in to ensure that these tacky fake birds will continue to outnumber the real deal rather dramatically. Number 4. Turtle Butt Breath Fun fact, most people talk about their butt. I think that's actually just a fact of life. But did you know that some animals also breathe out of their behinds? And not by necessity, by choice. The animal kingdom is a strange, strange place. Science has shown that certain turtles, including the Australian Fitzroy River turtle and North American Eastern Painted Turtle, actually breathe through their butts. Not for any specific reason, of course. They absolutely can breathe through their mouths if they were to choose to. It's just that they don't. Scientists tested their theory by dropping food coloring into the water, only to find that these turtles were sucking up the water from both ends, and occasionally just one end, not the mouth. We could easily analyze and explore the science behind the turtle's anatomy, but it will ultimately come back to the core question. Why? Why breathe through your toilet area when you have a perfectly good mouth? Or maybe we should be asking why we breathe through our mouth when we have… wait, are we the weird ones? Number 3. Old Spice World Record In our technologically advanced modern world, we've come to expect a certain amount of luxury. We're willing to pay extra for good food, for convenient services, and for the ability to avoid commercials. So why on God's green earth did Old Spice decide to produce a 14-hour commercial. I have no idea. This exercise in frustration aired in December 2018 Thanks, Mini Terry. on a Brazilian channel known as Woohoo. Again, we have absolutely no idea why. This extra-long bout of commercial torture was so extraordinary that it actually broke the Guinness World Record for the longest commercial in history. And I presume it also broke the record for angriest audience. The ad apparently took 20 hours to film in its entirety, and several long, arduous months of editing to create an ad that, from the sounds of it, didn't actually need editing. You may as well have just had a live stream of the old Spice Guy taking a bath for a day, until he got all pruney. For those of us that, no doubt, would have gone to extreme measures in order to avoid watching this frankly insane day of commercial nightmares, the ad company also uploaded a shortened, three-minute version on YouTube. Number 2. Ever-Growing Face For some of us, this may seem more like a nightmare of a fact than anything else. But I'm afraid it's true. You are never going to stop growing. Or, part of you will never stop growing. And 
Sadly, it's not the parts that you're probably hoping for. According to an Italian study, scientists have confirmed that our ears and noses will continue to grow until the day that we leave this mortal plane of existence. While our bones do indeed stop growing at the age of 18, it seems the cartilage that makes up most of our anatomy continues to grow until the day that you die, meaning that our facial structures are destined to get bigger forever. And as if that's not bad enough, our earlobes will elongate due to gravity's strength, making them look much larger than they already are. Bad luck for those of us with big features, eh? Thankfully, none of us will end up looking like Pixar characters, although this news is probably not the kind of thing that brings anybody comfort. We'd all rather look like George Clooney than the guy from Up. But hey, we'll take what we can get. Number 1. The Twitter Bird Well, what do you know? Turns out apparently everyone has a name, even brand mascots. Apparently, the Twitter bird does actually have a legal birth name I can't wait. Tweet. that nobody really knew about. And despite my suggestions, that name is not Tweety. Although credit where it's due, that's a great name, so well done me. Inspired by the basketball legend of the same name, the Twitter bird's real name is Larry T. Bird. Apparently, the co-founder of Twitter, Biz Stone, is from Boston and, as such, is a pretty hardcore fan of the Boston Celtics, and Larry Bird in particular. When it came time to give a name to their bird, it stands to reason that this mega fan would refer back to one of his idols. Ironically, Larry Bird was known for his trash talk on the court, something Twitter definitely keeps alive. With its constant stream of critics, trolls, and occasional extremists, Larry T. Bird is a good name for this dude. And it's all well and cool and everything, but Tweety still would have been a better idea, and I will continue to insist so until they grow a pair and send me that lawsuit they've been threatening me with for six years. Did you know any of these facts five minutes ago? And which one blew your mind the most? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.